Welcome to Reeducated TV, where we keep you informed. I have partially covered the Ottomans in Africa. Now we will take a look at their early beginnings or place of origin. In ancient times, Khazar was ruled by black Kagans or Imams. They originated from the Indus. They eventually overran Russia and the Danube. The Danube consists of Hungary, Serbia, Romania, and Bulgaria. But the Danube River flows through over nine different countries. The original Khazars are Ishmaelites. They are called Sawadani or Sofidani, where the word Sofi came from. They are also called Kisweri, which is Kazarian or Khazarian. The name Kazarian came from the name of the god Caesar or Kazar, who was a avatar and possibly incarnation of Buddha. Kazar is the Iswara of India. No, this is a perfect example of how easy we can be deceived with just the changing of one letter. In Northeast Tartary, they later changed the C to K and the C remained in Africa. In other words, Khazar was spelt with a K in Northeast Tartary and spelt with a C in Africa, giving you Khazar in Northeast Tartary and Caesar in Africa and Caesar in Europe. The name of the god Caesar or Caesar can be found around the world, in Africa, Europe and all of Asia. Kesari was the name of the prince of Orissa. Kanya is called Kesar and Kesu, which means imperial royal. From the mixed nature of the sigma, a, ta, u, or ta, it became its zaren and its zar and zar. All these words are found in South India, having the meaning of crucified God, the wise, or the savior. From this came Isar, Isar, Ishar, Hasar, Isardi, or Dev, and Isard, and Vizard, and Wizard, and Wiseman, and by a similar process, Wits, Wits, and Wizard, Asar in Egypt, and the Hebrew style of reading Raza, which are all closely connected with the Rasis of India. Upon these, the word Caesar, Caesar, or Zar was formed. So Asar is Caesar or Caesar. In Irish, their god is called Asar, which is spelled A O S A R, but pronounced A E S A R. In his Dostani, it is Eshwar, Eswar, Iswar. In Sanskrit, it is Eswara. In Arabic, Usar. Right? No. The story of Noah and his sons Ham, Shem, and Japheth is far from the truth and was created by the black Saracens who were in league with the Byzantine Empire. These black Saracens and Byzantines divided the world as such. I won't get too deep in the etymology of the name of the god Ham, but Ham came from the god Am or Amen or Amon. So how can Ham be a nation? So what happens when you take away these fables? Then most difficulties are removed. All those stories of Ham, Japheth and Shem lineage have kept us separated for the longest. With these stories, the Saracens, also called Arabs or originally called Khazars, used to govern their domains in Africa, parts of Asia, Europe and the Iberian Peninsula. The Byzantines also adopted the story. Remember, they were in cahoots. In fact, they were the same people of the same tribes. And they, meaning the Black Khazars and the Byzantines, orchestrated the history we have today and also tampered with the sacred books of all religion. I should highlight that all these people were black. There were white Khazars, which we will get to in a minute. So all of Africa was black. Scythia was also inhabited by black Khazars. 
the Iberian Peninsula was also inhabited by them. But it is key to note that the original Egyptians, Arabs and later Hebrews migrated to these regions, which is Africa, before the Ishmaelites, the black Ishmaelites that is. No, the early Egyptians, Scythians, Arabs and Jews further migrated to Britain, Italy, Spain, France and other parts of Europe, the Americas and other parts of the world, which I have proven. They were the shepherd kings. In Tartary, northeast Tartary that is, there was a caste system where you had lesser tribes or common tribes which were both black and white. In other words, you had common tribes that were white and you had some common tribes that were black. Most of the lower or common tribes were white. Remember, the black Khazars conquered Russia and the Eurasian steppes. Khazar was of a black royal lineage that stretched from the times of the Saka or Khan and Kagan from which the name Saga, Sagan, Sages, Sage came from among other names. Now the royals or the black Kara Khazars spoke a separate language different from the common tribes. The white tribes are said to be called Ak. The Khazar state was ruled by two kings. The main or greater king was more of a sacred rule or a sacerdotal divine symbolism. The lesser king was in charge of state affairs and the military. The Kagan or king was the Imam. The lesser king were known as Bek. They were autonomous states where white Khazars were in charge of their own state and the military but answered either to the Imam or great king. There were several migrations of the black Khazars to Africa. The first was the Almoravids, the Mohammedans, the Saracens and the last to come to Africa were the white Khazars who became the Ottomans and the white Khazars, the ones that remained in East Tartary, later became Ashkenazi or Jewish. So briefly, the religion of the Mohammedans were the purest. Changes in religion developed over time and because of separation. However, both the Saracens, who were the black Khazars, and the Ottoman Turks gladly accepted the Mohammedans' religion because it was similar. They saw traces of their own, but took it upon themselves to make the necessary changes, which was explained in my video, The Ottomans in Africa. Now, how ironic, the white Khazars conquered Africa, and now the blacks were given autonomous states and military and used by the Ottomans in war, just like they did to the white Khazars in East Tartary. The white Khazars were used as military states. What goes around comes around, right? Let me repeat that because it might have went over some people's heads. The white Khazars who became the Ottoman came to Africa and did the same thing to the black Khazars who were now Arabs. No, Scythia was ruled by other tribes of the Indus but was overrun by the black Khazars known as Masagate. I have given you this history in various ways, but now it's totally different when you know that they were the Khazars. The question is, why so many names and titles for the same nation or people? And why is this part or half of history hidden from the masses? Because of that story of Noah's sons, where Japheth are considered Asians, Ham considered African and Shem who knows where. That's how easy you were separated. Later, when the white Europeans, or should I say Napoleon, conquered the Ottomans, they further segregated the world, where Africa was designated for all blacks, which meant if you are black, you are African, and made themselves the original inhabitants of Europe which I have already proven is not true and the story of Cro-Magnon man journeying from Turkey to Europe is also not true. 
No, the Khazars were the Germanic tribes also. They were the ones that inhabited the regions of Europe and other parts and took on the name German or Germanic. In the time when they first crossed the Rhine and drove out the Gauls, they were called Tungrians and later Germans. By the way, the ancient Gauls were what they would call the Celtic tribes, but properly they should be called the early Jews or Ionians. Consequently, what was the name of a tribe and not of a people gradually prevailed until all called themselves by this self-invented name of Germans. So do you see what I am trying to tell you or trying to show you that the black Khazars who went by many names in various places over on Africa and Europe from the earliest times. They were Tartary. So all these stories about Mongol or Tartary not invading Europe is not true because they eventually became the English and they were the black Arabs in Africa. No, remember, before the Ishmaelites, who are the black Arabs, came to Africa, you had the shepherd kings who were the original Egyptians, Arabs, and Palestinian. Before it was called Palestine, it was called Palithan, the place of the Pali. And Pali means shepherd, the place of the shepherds. The Giza pyramids were built by the very first black orientalist. All other peoples or nations came and saw these pyramids. They were built from the most remotest of times, and they were not built to house mummies. I should mention that in the 1800s, mummies were being made almost every other day. So in short, most if not all of these mummies of Egypt are false. This topic will also be for another lesson, another part of history that was left out. They don't want you to know that these first black orientalists were the builders of the monuments around the world. That can't be accounted for. The black orientalists were the builders of the Giza pyramids, Easter Islands, the monuments of South America, Stonehenge, and many others. They were built on the 30th parallel or magnetic equator. As I have said before, this will be for another lesson. But how can you have so many stories for these monuments but not the true builders? or the reasons why they were built in the first place. Let's continue. The Moors know this information. They possess many secrets. Now, the Mohammedans were originally Chasdim, or Chaldean, descending from a very early period. They took on the name Ishmaelite from the Imam named Ishmael, the son of Dashafer. Now, the Caliphate was divided into three empires. The family of Amir reigned at Granada in Spain, the family of Abbas at Baghdad on the banks of the Tigris, and that of Fatima at Cairo on the Nile. This is what they called the three divisions of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Within the division of the three caliphates, there was 72 sects with the 72 helpers and 12 advisors of Muhammad and 12 Imams. The Ishmaelites are the followers of Ham, who was the god Amen or Amman, and is the reason we find them among the Fatimas of Egypt, who were all Ishmaelites. The Persians are said to be the followers of Shem and the Turks of Japheth. How the three connected themselves is unknown to me, but the story of Ham, Shem, and Japhet is definitely not the true reason. Whether it was by way of descent or by the imposition of hands with the three ancient patriarchs, the Ishmaelites were in war with the Caliphs and the Byzantine because they both usurped a part of their dominions. Both Syria and Egypt were of the worshippers of Ham. And the story of the uncovering of the patriarch by Ham, as indeed the book almost says, was invented to palliate or justify the usurpation or superiority of the other brothers. 
So now you see for yourself, right, that the Caliphates created the story of Ham, Shem, and Japheth, and its true meaning was their division of the world, or the division of their domains between the three empires, which were the Caliphate of Amir in Granada, Spain, the Caliphate of Abbas in Baghdad, and the family of Fatima at Cairo on the Nile, and is the true meaning of Ham, Shem, and Japheth, the rule of Europe, Asia, and Africa. No, your question should be if the story of Ham, Shem, and Japheth was created by the Moors, then why is their story in the Christian's Bible? And why do all three religions share the same stories? Or should I say the same lies? Because they are all in it together. The Christianity we know today came out of Egypt. And now you will see that the Moors and the modern Jews also established the Kabbalah and its secrets teaching in Egypt. And that all secret societies started with the Moors. They were the founders, the forefathers. And that's why the Moors know all the secrets of masonry. When they created the story of Ham, Japheth, and Shem is uncertain. But what I can tell you is that there was a grand meeting. It appears that in 402 and AD 1011, a great meeting was held at Baghdad. When the claims of the Fatimites, or should I say, the followers of Ham Caliphate were declared to be null and void. So here we may see why history came from the other two caliphs and not the Mohammedans. Here, in secrecy of the meeting, the true character of the whole shows itself. What could be the reason for keeping this secret meeting held in Baghdad, which was the capital city of the enemies of the Fatimites, who were considered Ham? or labeled ham the circumstance of the secrecy here is in perfect keeping with what i have maintained where the story of ham shem and japhet were further orchestrated where ham was now corrupted the ishmaelites pretended that muhammad told them to divide the world into three parts or his followers pretended that he had divided it anew and that this was done in consequence of the lines of Ham and Japheth having failed, and that therefore he had made a new division as survivor of the eldest line through the son of Abraham by the princess Hagar. Was this the reason for the secret meeting with the story of Ham, Shem, and Japheth was tuned to the finest, where Ham and Japheth were now cursed, or no longer worthy. Remember when I said the Moors possessed many secrets? Well, the Caliphs were of an esoteric and an exoteric system filled with secrecy. They were the first secret societies and masonaries. The order that is, in the secret meetings are the meetings charged with secrecy a secret objects of great bodies of delegates from all parts of Asia. I can see nothing but men meeting to bolster up the divine claim of the person calling them together. It was through the Moors that came the origin of Freemasons, Templars. The kings of Egypt were mere generals of the priest. And these priests of Egypt taught idolatry to the populace. Whilst they concealed the true dogmas under hieroglyphics and symbols that their great secret was the knowledge of a future state that the popular belief was confined to a terrestrial life the preference for which was to prevent the mass of mankind from having their minds diverted from the necessary pursuits of social life by refined and obstruse speculation respecting the future so the Mohammedans were the Ishmaelites, the worshippers of Ham, who were at war with the other caliphs. The grand secret meeting held in Baghdad in 402 
and the other in AD 1011 by the caliphs were held to denounce the Mohammedans or the worshippers of Ham, who were the Egyptians and Syrians at that time. Now this secret meeting proves that the story of Ham and Japhet being cursed was invented along with the sons of Noah. So the secret of the caliphs or the Moors was that the world would be their state. The same doctrine of the Kabbalah or the Gnosis were most likely taught in the old and in the new Academy of Egypt. The ancient philosophers, knowing very well that the belief of the truth of a dogma can never be meritorious, nor the disbeliefs of it criminal, were not able to see in what manner it would benefit those whose whole time was required to procure the comforts of life. Now you will see that the Moors are a secret society or of an esoteric and exoteric system with initiates, degrees and levels which they have kept a secret for some time. We will also see that the lodge in Egypt and the lodges or temples in Europe were destroyed. I will also add the Knight Templars were later prosecuted and some were executed and others made their way to America. You should know that the secret societies and the Moors worked together in the United States. Remember Dr. Pascal Beverly Randolph, also called Dr. Strange? He was a occultist, the founder of the Rosicrucian Order in the United States, which he learned in Egypt, where he was initiated within the esoteric mysteries. It is said that Dr. Randolph was the one who introduced magic to the West. All secret societies made their way to the United States, where they made it their haven. The history of Ishmaelism speaks who was the sixth of the Fatimite caliphs about AD 1004 established or greatly enlarged the college or lodge at Cairo called Daral, Hikmet or the house of wisdom which he abundantly provided with books and mathematical instruments and celebrated professors and a revenue of 250,000 ducats. In this institution all the science were publicly taught, as well as those of the secret doctrines which their book or Quran was believed to contain. The secret doctrines or mysteries were only taught by degrees or initiations or gradations from lower to higher ranks. Now you see that the Moors, who were originally the Khazars, is a secret society and thus the reason for the term Moorish science. Now, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanan also studied in Egypt and is an initiate of the order. Dr. Ben was a historian, so was he teaching us what he was allowed to whilst keeping the truth a secret? Dr. Ben was also a member of the Malik fraternity. Remember, it was the three caliphates mentioned earlier, Omnia in Spain, Abbas in Baghdad, and the Fatimas in Egypt were the ones that originated the concept of the fraternity. Everything I have told you in this lesson, the Moors already know, but why is it not taught to the masses or the black communities? To be fair, I should definitely add that the Fatima Caliphate was of Egypt. They were the Mohammedans and their religion was the purest but was eventually corrupted by the other two Caliphates. The Templars, Assassins and Freemasons were of the same philosophy and the Templars were all black. No, after the destruction of the House of Wisdom at Cairo in the 12th century, it was soon restored though in a new place, 
and it was about the time when London Temple Church was rebuilt in a new place as well and the churches in Cambridge and Northampton at the time there must have been some general persecution of the order and destruction of their buildings and perhaps on its nominal renewal it may have taken the name of Teutonic or St. John or Templar these were in fact all the same societies as much as modern Templars, Rosicrucians and Masons are for. They are nothing more than different lodges of the one or same order. What I am about to say, I know I can find enough persons to disagree with me, especially the Afrocentrics. I may be labelled as being mad, but what reason would there be for the truth if I don't use it to go against the grade? So here goes. The people of Africa are not originally Africans. As I have stated before, there were several migrations to Africa in the earliest times. I haven't even mentioned the very first migration to Africa, which I won't in this lesson. I think I am already causing enough trouble. If the very first black orientalists came from the Indus and built the Giza pyramids and the second wave which came a long time after and eventually created their own Egypt, that's the reason for Upper and Lower Egypt, there was also another wave of black orientalists who became the Gadelians of Ireland and the Hebrews in Africa. They eventually left Egypt and populated Palestine. They were the first Egyptians, Palestines and Arabs. Then we had the migration to Africa by the Ishmaelites, of which I just gave a brief history on their early beginnings and migrations. They were the ones that conquered Egypt and the so-called Turkish countries and most of Africa. No, all those tourists coming out of Egypt were first created by the Black Khazars who later became the Moors and further corrupted later by the French. Africa was conquered by the Ishmaelites from before the Common Era and is a part of the religious wars explained in my video on the origin of the Amazon. So, the Africa they sold us is not the real or true Africa, not when you look at the picture from this angle or when all the difficulties are removed. Oh, and before I forget, Second Egypt was not established until the second wave of black orientalists. It was always a marshland. And let me add another gem before continuing. Prester John is the Johannes of India. Johannes is the first. Before there was John or Prester John, it was Johannes of India who was a god, the sun. So, will Eurocentric's primary sources tell you that? I don't think so, because most are not truthful and some honestly don't know or just downright disagree because of their beliefs, so they would not mention it. Let me make it clear, I consider myself African and the people of Africa my people. I was born and I have been labelled an African and I accept it because I am and I am also Asian and of the Caribbean and I am European and I am American. I am the world and you are the world also. They have reduced us and have segregated us to continents and countries, borders and territories. That story of Noah and his sons is a perfect example of how this was done. This story was created by the Black Khazars. They might not have created the story of Noah because that story was created before their time, but they surely created the sons of Noah and the story was further elaborated on by the Byzantines in Isaiah. We were further segregated when the white Europeans made Africa the land of Ham, which meant even if you came from Mars, you were an African if you were black. Bear in mind, during this time, Asia was black up till the early 1900s, 
which I have shown in my series when Asia was black. But how would you know because they erased it from history or at least try to erase it from history? The white Europeans also made themselves the original inhabitants of Europe, which is very much far from the truth, proven by Giuseppe Sergi and others, and I will add myself. For those of you who are new, you can watch my video, The Atlanteans of the British Isles, where it proves what I have stated, that white Europeans are not the original inhabitants of Europe, and their stories are false and the stories of Africa are also false. My question is, how did we miss all of this? Or is it a case of looking for information to match our beliefs? We were programmed to respond to the words Africa, slavery, and among other words. We were also programmed to believe the story of harm. I will never subject myself to words. We were the ones that created them, whether the Indus, Africa, or the Americas. I won't be subjected to none, but I have made it my duty to find the truth, whatever that is, with no strings attached or agendas. No one knows my religion or tradition or way of life because I never made it a part of history. History is about finding what is or what was and not what you want it to be, or should I say what they have made it to be. And I am now talking to the Eurocentrics, Afrocentrics, and the latest, Amerocentrics. Well, I can tell you right now, there was life before the Greeks. Greece is where the West got their knowledge, and there was also life before the Black Khazars in Africa, who are also called Moors or Arabs. As I have stated before, the Black Khazars were the builders of history alongside the Byzantines, the same history we have to deal with today, a history that can only be supported by lies and more lies or stories that are all dead ends and can only be connected with more stories and can't be connected with the truth because the truth can only be connected with the truth. All those stories about the first kings of the first kingdom of Egypt are false. It was all fabricated, a myth, and the Eurocentrics can't read the real hieroglyphics of Egypt. It was a secret language or sacred language that only the high priest knew and the language was lost. And while we are on the matter of language, the true Hebrew language was also lost. The language we see today is not the true Hebrew language and possibly the writing also. Now, after the Greeks came into Egypt, the Egyptians were forced to speak Greek. The Greeks were originally Pulaskis, by the way, before they became Greeks. So, the Egyptian language was changed to Greek. Thus, the reason for everything scientific and biological have Greek words because they got the knowledge from the Egyptians. However, the original Egyptian language was lost, but I can tell you that they spoke Phoenician. Or is it that the reason why it was lost was because knowing that they spoke Phoenician would open up a portal to the truth. I have had it with yesterday's historians, and I am also disappointed in today's historians. Everyone wants to be politically correct. I honor my former black historians, even if they did not know what we know today. I still honor them for the work they did with the resources and information they had at the time. But it is our duty and our job to add to what they gave us and find the truth and ultimately correct history. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care.